Um, okay, so anyways, um, we're just gonna talk about supplements and how it is like truly the wild west um, supplement world is a little bit crazy. There is so many different ones, how to figure out if they work, how to figure out if they don't work, um, and just kind of sorting through how, how we do that. So like I said, it's a little bit like the Wild West. Here is a picture of the Wild West. That is the supplement industry. Um, there's not really a lot of safety or lawfulness in many areas or situations. And it's a bit of survival of the fittest, maybe. Um, there's there's not a ton of regulations with horse supplements. So you find a lot out there making many claims that might not be super truthful. So this is just a screenshot of a handful of the supplements that exist. There are so many options to choose from. How do you decide what your horse needs? And then if you do decide he needs, say, a hoof supplement or a digestive supplement, Dr. Dirk Google just adds to the confusion. You can spend hours upon hours searching, comparing, trying to figure out what your horse may need, how do you choose which one? And I myself am a horse person. I have been here and it's not a fun place to be when you are looking for one particular supplement or product and just this long list of options comes up and you don't know what to choose or how to figure out what is gonna work for your horse. So at Purina, we thought about how to make those choices and determined we should put supplements and any additive or nutrient we consider for horse feeds or supplements through what we call the test ride. You'll see this logo on Purina products because those products have been put through the test ride and are test ride approved. So this is the acronym up here. We have R for research, is there peer-reviewed public published research in horses, and horses is the key word there. Ingredients, I in for ingredients, does it contain one or more key ingredients? D is for the delivered amount or the dose. Is the amount delivered the amount needed to provide the benefit? And E is for efficacy. Can you see or feel a difference when you use it? There is one very key to the whole conversation. Um, we may not agree that there is a specific additive or nutrient that's beneficial, but if there is research that shows it may be, um, then they did research with 100 units of said additive, but the supplement you're looking at has three units of the additive. Would you expect the results shown in the research? Um, probably not. So we're going to look into it a little bit further on the next few slides. Um, horse owners, well, all consumers really tend to think that more ingredients and claims of benefits on a package, the more bang for your buck, right? That's not necessarily true, and especially not when the recommended feeding rate is similar to that of a product with fewer ingredients and claims of benefits. If you look at these two packages on the right here, um, representation of actual gastric support supplements outlast and a competitor both with similar recommended feeding rates, you'll see that the Outlast has a very simple um, formula with a very specific benefit of gastric support. The other supplement claims to provide gastric support, but also digestive support for the entire GI tract. 
it doesn't have the same gastric support ingredients or the same amount of gastric support ingredients. So if we know that Outlast has research that determined the feeding rate for the desired gastric support, what would happen if you use less effective gastric support ingredients at a lower inclusion rate? Would you expect the same results? No. So in Outlast, the seaweed derived calcium is the, the ingredient that does a really good job supporting the gastric system. And there's a lot of that in there. And it's a very simple formula. And the other one, we have some calcite and a very small amount that is likely not going to do much when you put it into um, a horse. So this right here is a screenshot of a supplement ingredient list, exactly as the company put it out. You can find several various ingredients to highlight <clears throat> um, but the point isn't really debating the ingredients. Um, it's just, we'll pull these ones out. Velvet antler, melatonin, dewormer. These are all in this list of ingredients in one supplement. Um, but does anyone know how much velvet antler a horse needs? Probably not because I don't know if velvet antler is anything any horse needs, um, but there can't be much velvet antler in a 50 gram scoop of this. I can't even find research on feeding melatonin to horses. And then we have dewormer, what kind of dewormer is in there and how much could be in there in just a 50 gram scoop. Um, I have no idea what who show woo root is or whether it does any good or bad for a horse. But again, regardless of the ingredient, how much of this ingredient could fit in a 50 gram scoop of this particular supplement? I mean, that is a long, long, long list to fit in a very small scoop. So based on all of that, this supplement right here would not pass the test ride. Um, and we have all heard the term snake oil salesman to mean something, um, someone selling something that doesn't work, but there actually was the first snake oil salesman, Clark Stanley, who sold liniment that cured everything, and he was good for everything. Um, a liniment ought to be good for, but didn't, but totally didn't do anything, despite all the claims. What actually happened was Clark had seen Chinese railroad workers rubbing snake oil on themselves after days of hard labor and they felt better. They used Chinese water snake oil they brought with them from China. The oil had higher omega fatty acids and um, myrithic acid, which is an anti-inflammatory. Clark Stanley decided to use the rattlesnake oil from the abundant snakes in the area, which have very different makeup from Chinese water snake. So they didn't have the anti-inflammatory benefits and didn't do what he claimed. His liniment not only had the wrong snake oil, it apparently didn't have much oil at all. So again, this would be something that did not pass the test ride. It was not the right kind of oil um, and it really didn't have much oil in it at all. So then we're going to break into the Purina supplements. And as I said before, all of those are test ride approved. Um, we have a line of very targeted research-based supplements, including ration balancers and a tub that again, all pass the test ride. So we're just gonna um, kind of go through these, talk about what they do. Um, it is estimated that up to 90% of active horses experience gastric discomfort, affecting health, attitude, and performance. You can support your horse's gastric health and comfort by adding Outlast supplement to your feeding program. Outlast supports optimal gastric pH in stressful situations, does it quickly for a longer time, 
and the proprietary mineral complex with a unique honeycomb structure um, handles more acid than other supplements we've tested it against. Uh, it can be used as a top dress on your horse's regular concentrate meal and as a snack before potentially stressful events like exercise, traveling, vet, or farrier appointments. This is one of those really great supplements that you can use until almost immediately if it's helping your horse. It's proven effective, fast acting, superior gastric support that passes the test ride. And now we'll move on to super sport amino acid supplement. This is all about recovery, performance, and muscle mass. It will support more rapid recovery of muscle cell integrity after exercise to help horses bounce back faster, increased exercise capacity for higher performance over a longer period of time, and support muscle development for a more athletic body type. Now it's not gonna turn your thoroughbred into a quarter horse halter horse like this, um, but it will support horses and muscle recovery performance and the mass that they were intended to have to perform at their best. Um, and Kelly, I think Anna might be here now. So yes. maybe, okay. <clears throat> I am here. I extremely apologize. I'm in St. Louis at our research farm uh, teaching a equine nutrition training today and had a little situation come up. Oh, so no. I'm so glad you started without me though, definitely. And it's, you can go ahead and finish the overview of the supplements and then people will have more context for, um, you know, thinking about um, what I'm going to talk about evaluating their supplement program. So go ahead and, and finish your part for sure. Okay. I very quickly went through the test ride before, but I know you will do a much better job than I did. Okay. So okay, I will finish going through this. Okay. Okay, um, so now if a horse needs additional calories along with gaining back muscle and bloom, Purina Amplify can help accomplish that goal. When horses are thin, they will break down muscle to burn energy. Um, adding just amino acids alone without adding more calories will not get that muscle back. The horse will just end up using the additional amino acids as calories. Um, that's where Amplify comes in. It's a very palatable extruded nugget with 30% fat and 14% protein, along with a balance of vitamins and minerals that won't mess up the balance of your base diet. Amplify is included in a lot of our premium Purina horse feeds, but it's also available as a supplement to be added to any feed when your horse needs additional shine and body condition for optimal bloom. And now on the opposite end of the calorie spectrum is horses who stay fat enough eating hay or pasture alone. These might be pasture ornaments, easy keeping performance horses or brood mares in early gestation, or maybe um, growing youngsters meeting calorie requirements eating just excellent forage. Enrich Plus is a concentrated low sugar and starch formula made with no grains designed to be fed as a horse's sole ration, along with quality hay or pasture. It has a low one to two pound feeding rate, fills protein, vitamin, and mineral gaps in forage without unnecessary calories that um, these easy keeping horses don't necessarily need. Along that same line, kind of, we have, um, our free balance 1212 mineral. This is for horses that are out on great pasture that you aren't necessarily going out to feed every day. It's a very versatile horse mineral that can be um, fed free choice. It's available in a weather resistant granular form that comes in a bag or in a convenient block form. Um, and does your horse need omega-3s, have any ingredient sensitivities, or are you looking to get that ultimate shine? Either of the Omega Match supplements could help you there. 
Omega Match Ahi Flower Oil comes from a plant with a unique high value fatty acid profile that behaves more similar to fish oil than any other plant-based omega-3 supplement without the fishy taste that we know horses don't like. The Omega Match Ahi Flower Oil can be added to any diet and provides comprehensive um, omega fatty acid supplementation, which supports a long list of things like joint health, reproductive health, cardiovascular health, skin health, normal glucose, metabolism, respiratory health, immune function, and muscle function. So supplemental omega fatty acids can really help with a lot of things. We also formulated Omega Match Ration Balancer with a very simple but well-fortified formula to provide nutrition that horses get from green pasture. It balances omega fatty acid ratios, provides natural vitamin E, has a therapeutic level of biotins for hoof health and outlast gastric support. This is also a limited ingredient formula, which is free from soy, alfalfa, corn, wheat, and molasses. It can be fed like a ration balancer, a low volume feed, or um, a top dress like a supplement. And recently, Purina launched a science-based mash for horses that provides hydration, recovery, and comfort. Now, this is not your grandfather's old brand mash that he'd feed once a week. Um, it is Replenimash. This mash is made from ingredients commonly found in commercial horse feeds. It's nutritionally balanced, supports a healthy hindgut, replenishes electrolytes, and contains outlast gastric support. This tasty mash is helpful for a number of situations when horses need to be hydrated while traveling after a hard workout or just as a treat. You can hide less palatable supplements or medications in Replenimash and most horses will clean it right up. Personally, I love to use Replenimash before and during the big temperature swings that we experience in New York to make sure um, my horses keep drinking. And if you are looking for an easy way to provide high quality nutrition, gastric sport and fly control, all in a self-fed horse tub, Purina Equitub is what you've been looking for. This is a horse tub that provides science-based nutrition in a self-fed form. It contains Outlast for gastric support, Amplify for bloom and muscle, and Clarifly to help control fly, fly population. And um, this is like a self-fed form, as you, as I said already, um, and expected intake is anywhere from like one and a half to two and a half pounds a day. And I'll just wrap up my supplement part and then Anna can get to probably what you all wanted to hear about the most. Um, so when you choose a Purina branded horse feeder supplement, you get that test ride that we're gonna learn a little bit more amount. You get research-based formulas, um, just choose the one that is designed for you or your horses and your situation and know that you're providing an effective and balanced diet. I know there's so many options out there, um, but I want everyone that's on this call to know that I'm always here to help. I travel through central New York. I make barn calls. Um, I talk to people on the phone. I email with horse owners uh, to help design feed programs to best support their four-legged friends. And my email is up on the screen and I'm sure that we can send that out to everyone too um, and just never hesitate to reach out. Okay. Well, you guys are definitely really lucky up there to have Megan as your local person. Because she's a really knowledgeable, like real horse person. She's your specialist for the area. Um, definitely take advantage of her assistance if you feel like you need some help navigating all the different feeds on your place and you need to simplify or you just feel like you need a checkup on your feeding program and want to make sure that everything is still, you know, the right choice for all the different horses on your place, anything like that. So I extremely apologize for my tardiness, and I am so glad that you guys started without me. So um, I will share my screen now and go through a little bit more 
of um, the details on kind of the process that I go through in my head when I'm, you know, on a farm, standing in somebody's feed room, and we're looking at, you know, maybe the feed board or the shelf of supplements, and we're trying to decide what makes sense to keep in the program, what has the best possibility of actually doing something useful for the horse, and maybe, you know, in certain cases, what can we easily do without and save the extra 70 bucks a month, potentially. So, um, is my volume and everything good? Um, you guys can see my screen. I can see everything fine. Perfect. Okay. Well, I am the kind of um, nutritionist that is your backup go-to person on the East Coast. So um, we always want everybody to feel like they have access to a consulting nutritionist if they need it. So if Megan um, comes across any scenarios where you feel like maybe if I need to get in and help consult with your vet on certain, you know, nutritionally related medical conditions, anything like that, I am kind of your on-call person. I live in Aiken, South Carolina, and here are some just pictures of my own horses to prove that I am a, indeed a horse person. So I spend about half my time traveling and you know, making farm calls, doing meetings, speaking at vet conferences, and then the other half of my time, I'm in the office, you know, writing the things that go on the bags, and you know, writing articles and brochures, and um, answering customer service questions. So if you ever have any issue or question at all, if you call the one eight hundred number that's printed on literally everything we make. Um, if the ladies in the office don't know the answer, it comes to me. So I talk to a lot of random horse people with a lot of variety of issues every day. So um, as you can imagine, I've heard some things. <laughs> and one of the you know big topics of conversation usually is, um, okay, I feel like I'm on the right track with my base feeding program, but now I want to critically evaluate what's going on with the supplements. There's so many out there. They, they make a lot of promises. Some of them sound really great. How do I know if they're going to do anything? And, you know, the supplement market is large because there are some good things about feeding supplements. One of them being it makes you feel better. It gives you the peace of mind that like, okay, I am trying to do the best possible job for my horse. I'm tailoring his nutrition to his specific needs. Um, hopefully there's places where maybe, you know, I am improving his quality of life, that sort of thing. The tricky part about it is that um, it's hard to sift through the information, both good and bad, that's out there in the wide, wide internet. So um, if you start wandering around, um, especially, you know, horse Facebook land and otherwise, you come across a lot of people with a lot of opinions and um, some of them, you know, are good and some of them are very misinformed. And um, just like in the human supplement world, a lot of it is not well regulated. So you can make claims that it is gonna do everything up to raising them from the dead and no one really is going to come after you and say you're not allowed to say that. So that's tricky. And then sometimes, you know, really people try to get supplements to solve problems that would really be better solved by A, addressing something in the base feeding program. You can't supplement your way out of really bad hay necessarily or a cheap, poor quality feed program and relying too much on supplements when really you should be working with your vet. There are supplements that can help support certain medical conditions, but you know, if you've got a Cushing's horse that really needs percent, I am not going to tell you that there's a certain supplement that can do as good a job managing some of that disease for one example. So, um, as you know, it is a wild world out there. I'm sure everyone is familiar with, 
you know, it used to be flipping through the pages of the Valley Vet catalog or the middle of the Dover catalog, and now it's wandering on around on the Smart Pack website or, you know, wandering through the shelves of your local feed store. And um, I'm sure these numbers are outdated because there are more and more on the market all the time. And I am not anti-supplement at all, and I don't want anyone to get that impression because there are certainly places where, you know, some horses can benefit from a little bit more targeted attention to certain parts of their nutrition. And more and more, we're learning about how nutrition can be a part of health. And it's not just about, you know, we want them to look shiny and be fat, we know we can actually impact their health through really good nutrition. So supplements can be a part of that, but some of them are definitely useless foo-foo dust. So how do you know which is which? And that is what Megan was talking about with the test ride. So this is a fun little acronym. We love an acronym um, in the business world and this is no exception. So um, we kind of, developed this little four-step model to kind of walk you through what goes through our minds when we're evaluating whether or not something is worth feeding to your and our horses. So um, it's take your supplements or take your feeds for a test ride, just like you would try out a horse before you buy it. You should try out or at least evaluate a supplement before you decide to feed it. So R-I-D-E, fun little horse related pun here, and the R stands for research. And I know that almost every supplement out there, if you look around on their website somewhere, it is going to say that it is research-based. No one's fact-checking that. No one's making sure that they actually, in fact, have research behind it, but everyone knows that horse owners know that you know research is good so they use that as a buzzword so how are you going to figure out who really has any data behind their products or not well try to go look for it if you go to their website and or call the company um, they should be able to point you if they truly have data behind their product or if they can point you to a research paper that shows where the benefit of that um, ingredient was proven, they should be able to show you that to read. And what our approach to that is, is we uh, publish um, what we call little research reviews. We obviously also publish in peer reviewed journals and long form articles, but for um, kind of shorter summaries, you can go on our website. And if you want to find all of the research reviews, kind of two page articles that we've written about the development of Outlast, for example, and all the science behind it. You can go to the web page for the Outlast product itself, and at the top there are different PDFs linked, and you can actually read the study design and the number of horses and what we found and the statistical significance between the treatments and all of that. So um, that is kind of the first step. I would say see if you can even you know, surface level, find any amount of proof in what someone is saying. Past that, if we get to I for ingredients, do the ingredients make any sense, basically, is the question. And this, what is on the screen, is a real ingredient listing from a real supplement that is, I didn't just like search for on Google for the craziest supplement on earth. I have seen this in barns, personally. Um, so this is a real supplement, and the longer you look at it, the crazier it gets because you start focusing in on things like velvet antler and dewormer for some interesting reason. And um, no, like, I don't care what they say this supplement does. There's no way that A, all of these ingredients are targeting a certain, you know, function in the horse, and B, the dosage rate of this supplement is 50 grams. That's a standard little supplement scoop size. How much of the last thing on that list do you think is actually in that scoop? 
maybe like one grain of powder. So um, if I look at the label on a supplement and there are, you know, it's far too complicated. There's tons of ingredients in a really tiny dose size. I start to wonder, is there enough of any of those to actually be doing anything? And does it make sense for what this supplement says it's for? If this is a, you know, gastric um, ulcer prevention supplement, and there's nothing in the ingredient listing that has any benefit to the lining of the stomach and no buffering ability to counteract acid, I'm thinking this doesn't really make much sense and I don't see what the mode of action would be here to impact gastric ulcers. So that is the I for test ride. Another um, couple notes while we're on this, I mentioned that supplements are not well regulated not nearly as strongly as feed itself is. So um, any product that's a, a feed, you know, 50 pound bag type feeds are regulated by AFCO and they have very, at least much more strict rules. And they have a certain set of ingredients that are approved to go in bags of feed. Those are not the same rules that supplements follow. Basically there's no, no rules for supplements, but there are a lot of ingredients that are not approved by AFCO that you can put in a supplement, but not a feed. For example, glucosamine, for example, is not AFCO approved. We can put it in a supplement, but we can't put it in a bag of feed and say that it's built in a bag of feed. Um, that doesn't keep some people from doing that, but it's technically not legal. Um, the NASC is an organization that tries to quality control the supplement world. Um, it's maybe a good place to start. You know, if you see that, that seal on your supplement, maybe that means someone has at least, you know, checked into the validity, but it's not a fail safe. And I will actually tell you that we choose not to try to participate in that program for our supplements because we did not find that it really did much for a lack of a better word out there. So that's just kind of some thoughts on the regulations. So now we've gotten to D for dose. And I think this is honestly kind of the simplest one because think about how large horses are and think about how tiny the dosing of a lot of supplements is. Now, certainly there are some ingredients that are extremely powerful and a very tiny amount can do a lot, but a few milligrams of lysine, for example, is pretty meaningless when you realize that a horse to have any benefit to their muscle mass is gonna need several grams per day, not milligrams. So think about the amount of the supplement and the amount that you feed. Is that a reasonable amount for your horse, um, and it, it goes both ways. If anybody's familiar with the, I'll call it the Prevacox conundrum, the dose for a dog is a lot bigger than the dose for a horse. So that's why going back up the channel to R for research, that's why that's so important. We can't just use research done in pigs and extrapolate that out for horses because we don't know that the same dosing rates would apply. You can't just you know, multiply it by their body size and assume that that will give you the same type of result. And then sometimes it's hard to know um, maybe there's not a lot of readily available data on the dose, but um, that's part of our research process here. Um, maybe no one has determined how much, I don't know, turmeric, for example, it actually takes to see a noticeable benefit in your horse's inflammatory status. So we will design a study where we feed multiple different doses in, you know, a low, a medium, a high and then try to see what it actually takes to see a difference. Um, finally, I guess another little sneak peek into some research that we've done. We have found some very interesting ingredients that do some cool stuff for horses, 
but to get a noticeable benefit, the dose has to be so high that it will be so cost prohibitive that it's just not reasonable to pursue. So if there's a more cost effective option, like, yes, we could design this really, really great joint supplement, but if it costs more than a year supply of Adequan to begin with, then you're probably just better off talking to your vet about some Adequan prescription or some legend rather than um, pursuing a nutraceutical type route. So finally, we've kind of danced around it, but the last is E for efficacy, as in, does this do something noticeable for the horse? And I'll tell you, a lot of times when I'm looking at some random supplement or I'm talking to somebody and they're like, hey, I'm, I'm trying this supplement. What do you think of it? If I'm not familiar with it and it's kind of off the wall and I'm not familiar with the literature and I don't know anything about the reasonable dose for it, but I can at least say that it's not going to harm anything. I tell people, okay, let's run a little experiment. Think about this scientifically and set yourself up for, you know, evaluating this critically. Evaluate your horse today, whatever, you know, if you're looking for lameness, maybe have your vet out to jog them and flex them and give you a lameness eval today. Feed that joint supplement for 90 days and do it again. Evaluate them a second time and see, did we see any benefit? If you did, great. Just because I don't have data to have proven that before doesn't mean it didn't work for your horse in that scenario. But if you, and this is a, just a silly example, but you see this mare on the screen. Um, if I bought her an ear shrinking supplement and fed it for 90 days, and this is her after picture, clearly her ears did not shrink and I will not bother buying that again and I will save my money. Um, this is such a common type of scenario. We over time just, you know, well, maybe I'm gonna try this thing. And you feed that for a while and then you're like well i'd also like to try this and before you know it several years down the line you might be feeding your barn of a handful of horses 10 different supplement programs and i don't know maybe some of it's doing something i'd sure hate to see them without it i'm not sure it's doing anything and that's how you end up spending a lot of money on a feeding program that may or may not be super efficient so um, I would just say about be, you know, follow the scientific method, evaluate things objectively. And if it doesn't seem to be working, definitely be willing to abort mission and try something else. So everybody always wants to ask specifically about a bunch of different supplements. What do you think of this joint supplement? What do you think of this calmer? And I certainly do have lots of experience and opinions about a variety of supplements out there. Um, I just made a, a short list of the different kinds of supplements that are out there. And uh, in all these categories, there are items that definitely work and do something. And there are a lot of items that definitely do absolutely nothing but spend your money. So I'm not going to make blanket statement that says no digestive supplement works. It's all silliness because it's not. There are some that definitely make sense for certain horses. Um, even in the calming supplement realm, which can tend to be one of the more uh, uh, vague, hard to, just, hard to determine categories, there is actual data on a specific calming supplement where it showed a slower reaction time um, with one specific form of magnesium, but I am not aware of any data supporting many, many of the other ones. So uh, it's beyond the realm of this talk to try to go through all of these and tell you which supplements are good and which are bad, but um, that's where if you need a follow-up consult with us, we are available for that. So I wanted to take something for the test through the test ride as a little example to leave you with. Um, we decided, okay, let's let's look at gastric ulcer supplements because there's a million of them out there. Gastric ulcers are a big problem. We know that we can help horses through 
nutrition with that. So let's see what, let's take a random ulcer supplement for a test ride. And I have certainly nothing against Nutrient Buffer here. I know nothing about them as a company. It is just, we Googled horse gastric buffer one day, and this was the first thing that came up. So that was our random choosing here. So let's take Nutrient Buffer for the test ride. Let's see, it's uh, about $50 a gallon. You can feed a quarter of a cup is a dose. You're, you can feed that up to three times a day, which gives you 78 cents a dose or $2.34 a day. And if anyone's shopped around in supplements, you know that that sounds pretty reasonable. That is certainly you know, more expensive than some things, but cheaper than a lot of other things. So, okay, let's try this out. We went on their website and looked for research. Um, they have a page on the website titled research. So wanted to kind of dig into it and see if there's anything behind any of this. Basically, we just found articles about ulcers in general and articles about you know, H2 blockers and proton pump inhibitors, which yes, are very highly researched ways to manage gastric ulceration. However, that actually has nothing to do with this product. The nutrient buffer in the, in the bottle is not an H2 blocker or a proton pump inhibitor. Those are drugs that you would get from your vet. So yeah, it's research on ulcers, but it's not research on this product. However, they do hold a patent which is interesting and we respect. If you have gotten something patented that does show that it is unique on the market, it does not mean that it works. It just means that it's a novel item that no one else has invented before. That doesn't mean it works. So I would say this fails the R. Then let's look at the ingredients. Do they make sense? Well. There's not a million of them for one thing, so that's a good start. Um, second of all, okay, we got water and oil as a carrier. We've got calcium carbonate and magnesium oxide. That's a good start. Those are things that have buffering ability and can affect the pH of the horse's stomach and can counteract acid. Great, it has buffering agents. That totally makes sense for an ulcer supplement. Passes the eye. So we're 50-50 here so far. D for dose. Is a quarter of a cup per dose going to do anything? Well, we did the math on the nutrients of the, you know, the buffering ingredients, and we found that if you fed it up to the three times a day um, of, and looking at the active ingredients, calcium and magnesium, you'd be getting your horse 10 and a half grams of buffering stuff a day. Is that good? Bad? I, how would you know? Well, we would know because we've done a ton of research into affecting the pH in the horse's stomach. So um, that's a good question. I will address that when we talk about um, Outlast, how much buffering ingredients it took. So the way that if I was just a horse owner trying to decide if 10 and a half grams was enough buffering to do anything is I'd look at the efficacy. Um, do people seem to think that this supplement works? Well, I don't know. On the Big D website, 17 people reviewed it and gave it 4.7 4 out of 5 stars. So this person who wrote this testimonial seems to think it worked. Um, it's a low investment. I might, you know, if I was tempted to run a little experiment at my house, I'd buy it and try it for, I don't know, at least on this sort of thing, I'd try it for several weeks and see if I could tell a difference in my horse. Um, so will we buy it? Eh, maybe. I don't know if you guys reached the same conclusion there, but I think it's not the worst thing I've ever seen for sure. So contrast that. This is not, this, I could have done any number of supplements that we don't have a corollary for. So this is not just a big sales pitch on Outlast. This is just a pretty simple example of taking something to the test ride. But let's look at Outlast, for example. Um, you know, if you feed it three times a day, which you might to a stressed performance horse that gets a lunch already, or maybe you haul to a lesson in the afternoon, you throw him a dose before he gets on the trailer. Um, I know the prices have potentially changed over time, but 
in general, we still consider this to be a fairly reasonably priced type item. So if you go looking for the research, as I mentioned, we have a ton of it available on the website. We actually have five peer reviewed publications published in the equine uh, vet science journal. It was formulated by PhDs. We have the data readily available on the website. You can go find it. You can see the statistics. We think it passes the, the research step because the research was done with this exact product in the amounts that we are recommending you feed. Do the ingredients make sense? Well, they're right there on the bag for you. They're pretty simple. Um, there's, there's only a handful of them. So in that 200 gram dose, you have a good chance of getting a reasonably meaningful amount of the active ingredient, which is the seaweed derived calcium. So um, compared to you know a bag that says it's gonna do the same thing, but has lots and lots of different ingredients, that means they can only have so much of the active ingredient. And if the dose isn't any bigger, you're getting less of your active ingredient that's gonna actually do most of the work in terms of counteracting your acid. So we think these ingredients make pretty good sense. We have a lot of data on that seaweed derived calcium and its buffering abilities. The dose. So our dosage is providing 11 grams of buffering stuff in a dose. Um, if you really wanted to feed lots, we do say you could feed up to six doses a day. I don't know that most people do that, but in a standard program, I'd say two to three doses a day. So that's 22 to 33 grams of buffering stuff a day. Remember back to the nutrient buffer, you were getting 10 and a half grams a day total. So knowing what I know about the buffering abilities of a dose of Outlast, I would say your three doses of nutrient buffer might have approaching a similar buffering ability to one dose of Outlast, but it's also calcium carbonate versus seaweed derived calcium, which are very different in their buffering strength. So we feel good judging by our data and our research in horses that yes, this is enough of a dose to do something because we've seen the effect it has on gastric ulcers in horses, both on our farm and out in the field. And then E for efficacy, um, this is probably old numbers at this point because um, you know I assume we've gotten more reviews since then, but you know, Outlast has been out on the market for, I don't know, since 2016 or 17 now. And we have a lot of experience with it in a lot of different courses, environments, disciplines, farm, farm situations, feeding programs, fed on top of all different brands and types of feeding programs. And overwhelmingly, we do see horses have a positive benefit in terms of gastric comfort and prevention of ulcers long-term from using Outlast. And I personally feel good about saying that because I use it on my own previously ulcery off the track thoroughbred. So um, we feel like it passes the E for efficacy. So with that, I, I would just encourage you, you can do this for a supplement you're thinking about taking yourself or a, you know, treatment you're thinking about putting on your face or any number of things you want to evaluate critically that you're thinking about buying. Um, I hope you um, would agree with us in the idea that people can say a lot of stuff and if you just believe everything you read, you know, there's supplements out there that are, like I said, curing cancer and bringing them back from the dead. So um, I would encourage everybody to be um, educated and skeptical consumers, and we don't feel like we are um, accepted from that. You can definitely look at all of our products critically, too. So if you know anybody's feed rooms who look like this, it can definitely be a crowded space, but we feel like we hold our products to a higher standard. <laughs> Another horse pun for you, like jump standards. 
So um, with that, if anybody has any questions, I don't know if you can put them in the chat um, or how we want to handle that. I know that they um, can follow up if you have any questions for the folks at Country Max or want to get a hold of Megan to um, evaluate your feeding program. We are happy to do that. I will stop sharing and take any questions or let you guys wrap up with whatever announcements you want to make. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you sharing your knowledge with us. Um, yeah, anybody that has any questions, feel free to put them in the Q&A chat. Um, as long as um, you don't have to run anywhere, uh, yeah, we'll take a couple, couple minutes. People have questions, yeah. Sure. So feel free to type them in the chat. There's none waiting for us, but we will see if anybody has anything. No pressure if you don't. If you think of something later, like I said, they know how to get a hold of me or feel free to call. You know, if you ever have a question about anything you read on a bag of feed or anything like that, call us up, the 1 800 number. There are nice ladies that are sitting in the office here at the farm in St. Louis. You will literally talk to either Gina, Bev, Pat, or Joyce, and they will answer your questions. So we are not some big faceless company. It's it's pretty much just us answering people's worst questions. So um, feel free to get in touch in the future if you ever need to. Um, I don't know if you guys have any announcements or anything like that. We do not. We um, I thank you to everybody that came. Um, and again, thank you to, to Megan and Anna for, for again sharing your knowledge with us. That was a really great presentation and we appreciate your time. Thank you for having us. Yeah, anytime. Thank you.